I forget how many we've done of these now, forgotten functions. <laughs> um, and whether Marketo Sales Insight is a forgotten function, I don't know. But hopefully we've got an audience of people that we don't normally always address and don't normally always talk to. And that would be the salespeople. So, of course, we spend a lot of our time inside of Marketo and therefore we talk to the marketing operations folks. But today we're focusing specifically on uh, the MSI componentry, but not just that. You'll also see me show our CRM system and you'll also show, uh, see me show our, my Outlook and I'm going to be doing a demo as the salesperson um, kind of uh, without the aid of a safety net. It's actually in our real live instance of Marketo and Salesforce. So um, let's get rocking. So V, I think the next slide says what wonderful rock stars we are. Um, basically, uh, I'll introduce Veronica here as um, world expert as far as Marketo is concerned. Um, but she has a huge amount of experience with CRM and business systems and integration of all of those sort of things therein. And uh, I haven't done one of these for a while, so I'm a bit nervous. Um, and I'm the founder of Blueprint X, born as Resolution Marketing Services 21 years ago and currently looking for our 300th Marketo implementation. So hopefully that will happen in the next few days and we'll have a bit of a celebration. Today, these are our roles. I'll let that sink in just for a tick. But um, yeah, we'll come back to that in a second. But what V's gonna do is start talking about MSI from the marketing side, what needs to be done to set up and I'll be taking over and showing you and I'm gonna to pretend to be the sales guy. So I'm gonna yell things like, show me the money and that sort of stuff because that's what salespeople do. So we're trying to make this a bit fun, but we're also trying to show you how we do this. Now we do this because, um, and that our rate of growth, we need to be able to get things as scalable as possible and as simple as possible and as frictionless as possible. I'm the main sales guy here for ANZ. And if it isn't straightforward and simple, I can't cope with the number of queries that we're getting. And it's got to be as straightforward and as easy as possible to integrate my CRM, which is where I spend almost all of my time into the Marketo instance and have those two things doing clever things together. That's what we're going to show. So quick, few seconds about us. We're uh, customers in 34 different countries, offices in seven. We've got a lot of experience. Uh, internationally, we are a um, platinum provider or platinum um, partner of Marketo's. Here locally in Australia, we're gold. Um, but we have a huge amount of experience as far as um, setting up systems and integrating into your sales and marketing environment. So if you need any help, let us know. This is the key one for us. We um, we love working with the Adobe folks and the Marketo folks, been doing it for 10 years. We are Marketo's uh, or Adobe's Marketo Partner of the Year for 2019 and 2020. Um, so very, very proud of that. Um, why are we doing this? We're just trying to, to show people our capabilities or the capabilities that Marketo has. We're, nothing we like better than, than making Marketo sweat. As the marketing side of the equation, as Graham mentioned, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the best practice for setting up sales insights in Marketo now. Uh, sort of full disclosure, this is my favourite thing in the whole Marketo platform. So oddly, oddly enough, um, having worked in Marketo for a good decade, uh, I love this. I love this tool uh, just simply because it's one of those things that just really, it's really where the rubber hits the road in terms of how marketing and sales align, how they actually work with Marketo together. And it's more than just lead scoring. So Graham's going to look a little bit at lead scoring on the other side uh, from his perspective, but I'm going to focus very much on how we actually set up things like interesting moments. Uh, MSI, so Marketo Sales Insight, sales emails, how to use the sales campaign function, and how you as marketers can report on how sales are using the fruits of your labor on the other side. So the um, so let's kick it off. So let's start with interesting moments. An interesting moment in Marketo is where marketing decides where they're going to, uh, or decides what interesting thing they're going to bubble up and show the sales teams. So uh, if you showed the entire Marketo log of things that people do, salespeople would literally drown. The whole idea of interesting moments is that you and sales decide together what sales want in their faces. It's the first screen when we get into the sales insights tab in CRM. Who hit and the pricing the page? <laughs> 
who hit the pricing page. Remember, I'm a sales guy. I, I, wanna, <laughs> I, I want the best lead possible. Pricing page is clearly an interesting moment. So the, um, the, and the whole idea is to build these centrally. So when you're looking at interesting moments, whatever you do, don't spread your interesting moments willy-nilly all over your smart campaigns and programs because, A, you'll never be able to find them and so you'll have random things popping up in sales insights on the CRM side that, you, that you're not controlling. And, B, the next person who comes into your Marketo instance after you will want to shoot you. So the, uh, so the whole idea about uh, getting this right is to get your uh, interesting moments built centrally. So you should actually have a program in your operational part of your marketing activities that's just called interesting moments. Have yourself a program there, set them all in here. And when you're setting them up, well, after, after you uh, have set them up, this is what it's going to start to look like inside Salesforce. So Graham's going to show this live a little bit later in the piece. But uh, this is what's going to show up for all of your sales teams. So if you've got like click link and email, click link and email, blah, 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 you might want to consider, reconsider, uh, do you want was sent a, a email in your interesting moments? And be quite uh, specific about what you, uh, about what you want to uh, surface up at this level. But... Uh, uh, just a quick note for the people on the call who could be Dynamics folks, this is Salesforce. Dynamics looks slightly different, functionality is identical. And for the people on the call who may be using the NetSuite connector, there are some features uh, of this that uh, are actually in the NetSuite portlet. So lead score, stars and flames, and interesting moments, web activity, things like that. Uh, but some of the stuff that we mentioned, I mentioned a little bit later is, is not there. So uh, we'll, we'll look at that as we go. So interesting moments uh, is all about building up your smart list trigger. So for instance, you could have unsubscribe from email is any. And in your interesting moment flow step, see how we've got unsubscribe from trigger.subject. Whenever you have a trigger token, it's completely related to the trigger that triggered the smart campaign. So in this case, if I've got trigger.subject, it's going to give me the subject line of the email they unsubscribed from. If I had trigger.subject for just opens email, it would give me the subject line of the email they opened. So it's all about relating it to the actual trigger. So if it was visits web page or visits pricing page, it would have this person visited X page. So with uh, in terms of the web page that you would put there. So uh, just to backtrack up a little bit, when you get this, on the docs page, there is an entire glossary for the types of tokens you can use for interesting moments. I recommend you get really familiar with them because you can do some really cool things with these tokens and push forward lots of really awesome information to your sales teams. So it's a good thing to get on top of. Also, something that some people don't know, uh, when you're building an interesting moment, you've got the three out of the box categories or types, email, milestone, web. If you want more, just type it in. The, um, you can create a whole new one. So if I've got SMS was sent and I'm sending the name of the, the webhook that sent the SMS, I, would, uh, I could just create a type called SMS. So get on top of your interesting moments because it's a massively cool tool and it's immensely flexible uh, in terms of working with your sales teams about what it is that they want to see. Now, let's talk about setting up the actual MSI sales, uh, sales emails. Any email can be published to Sales Insights from wherever it is. Now, there's good reasons why you would want to do it in a specific way, and we're going to go through that in a second. But uh, in the end, uh, to make an email visible at MSI, you just open your email settings inside the email and go publish to Marketo Sales Insights. There are two new settings or new-ish settings that people might not have seen. So underneath that says, allow CRM user to edit the email. If you are in financial services or things like that, sometimes those emails have been cleared by legal and you do not want salespeople messing with them. That's not because you don't trust your salespeople. It's just that you're legally liable for everything you send out. So if you can't, so Graham is going to show how he edits emails before he sends them out. But if you can't allow that, you can untick this. Also, uh, you can set an expiration date for this email. So if you're making an email available in CRM for, a sales team, for your sales team, so let's just say it's an event invitation that's happening on the 28th. You do not want them sending this email as an invitation after the 27th. 
So you can set an expiration for things. Also, if you just leave stuff there forever, it just gets outdated. Um, setting the expiration actually helps keep your content fresh so that your sales team are always looking at things. So the, um, just kind of, uh, <laughs> the, uh, I'm just looking at the chat. Yes, the expiration date is amazing. Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty new. It's well in the last year or so, and it's massively, massively useful. So the, um, so now obeying unsubscribe settings, the number one question I get about MSI quite literally is when a salesperson sends out the email, does it have to obey the unsub settings in my keto? The, the answer is you choose, right? So uh, don't forget that Sales Insight has a whole bunch of admin features in the back and you have to scroll down the admin page to get to this one because it's hidden when you first go in. So scroll, scroll, scroll the settings at the bottom. So, and uh, if you hit edit settings, you're gonna get the ability to either respect the unsub, to ignore the unsub, do not ignore the unsub in Australia. Just don't. Um, uh, Americans uh, have completely different rules and this system was built by Americans. If this was built by an Australian, that would not even be there. The um, ignore unsubscribe settings is not a thing here. So just don't, but respecting the unsub settings, but you could actually uh, do, a, do something where you're respecting the unsub settings if it's more than one recipient, because in Australia, our laws, one-to-one -one communication, not the same, they're not covered by the same rules. So just be uh, very specific about what you want that to look like. And again, sort of uh, for operational email, is it going to respect the unsub settings or not? Because you can set MSI operational emails. That is something you can do. And, um, and there's a little, very little known option here. It says enable ability to lock templates. So what that does is enable that setting in the, in the email editor. So if you've got this ticked, it enables you to lock it from salespeople at the email level. If this is unticked, that option goes away. So, the, um, so think about how you want these options to be set up. So building best practices, do not, do not, do not, do not publish sales insight emails from all over the place. Because what that does is um, in CRM, when someone goes into Salesforce or Dynamics, it, ref it reflects the folder structure that the email is in to try to keep it all neat and tidy for sales. But what happens is if you publish a random email in some random part of sales, in, in random part of Marketo, it's gonna show the, the folder structure down to that email and it'll have like all kinds of weird folder structures inside CRM. So um, it'll be just too chaotic for sales to use full stop. So what you need to do is you need to make sure that your program, your program and your email names make sense because Graham's going to show you how the salespeople use them. So uh, you'll see when we get there how important it is that these emails are self-explanatory in their in their naming. Now, in normal marketer practice, we would tell you to name your program specifically and your asset generically. In this case, I would say be specific with both. So, uh, because what you want to do is you want to build separate dedicated MSI emails in their own in their own folder structure or their own programs in Marketo. You can build this either in Design Studio or in Marketing Activities, but it should be under a dedicated area, uh, just so that that folder structure is good to go. So, the what you would do is you would get your email right in whatever program it was being sent from. If it wasn't a specific Sales Insights email, if it was something if it was being run somewhere else, like an event invitation, you would get it right and then clone it into the place where sales should pick it up from. So the other thing that you can do is you can make entire campaigns available for sales to just add people to. Now, many of you may have used the campaign is requested tool to trigger or to daisy chain campaigns from another Marketo smart campaign. If you choose campaign is requested sources sales insight and then approve this trigger, this smart campaign will now be available for sales to just add people to it. Fantastic for adding people to nurture campaigns, for event invites, for uh, anything where you want sales to be able to determine or decide who falls into that workflow. So, uh, but unlike the MSI emails, these triggers, they don't obey the folder structures when they're displayed in Salesforce. They're just shown as programs. So you can actually just, um, 
make a separate smart campaign within like an event program or something like that, that or on nurture that allows uh, sales just to trigger from that campaign. So, and again, Graham's gonna show what this looks like when we get into sales. But uh, this is a really cool tool to enable someone to be able to trigger an entire program from Marketo without having to mess around with add to campaign and all that kind of stuff with just by going, just two clicks, add to, add to, add to Marketo campaign in Sales Insights. It's a one-to-one -one add though, so it's usually used for things where you want to go one, 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 one. Add to campaign, obviously, you can do it in bulk, so there's good reasons for using one or the other. So the last bit I want to show you from a, I guess, a marketing standpoint is how do I know if sales are even using this stuff? So, I mean, I've gone to a great deal of effort to build out these sales insights emails. We've got our messaging, our product marketers have gotten involved, our legal teams have signed off on it. Everything's set up beautifully, and sales don't look at them. So, the, um, so then you have an adoption problem. But you also want to see how the emails themselves are performing. So this report gives you both. It gives you adoption. So let me show me by sales rep how many people are using different uh, uh, sales emails, as they're called. And uh, so this is called the Sales Insight Email Performance uh, Report, one of your key report types in your analytics area. So the um, set it up so that you've got one that shows just engagement activity and one that's sort of sorted by sales rep so that you can see adoption activity. And it's, in, it, it's not something to hammer your salespeople over the head with. It's just a guide for you to show you which emails are actually getting good responses from customers and which emails are, or which sales reps are totally getting behind this and which ones maybe lead a little bit more uh, adoption and training to get them up to speed, to show them where things are and what they're good for. Yes, again. What can you see? You can see Outlook, I'm I assuming. I can see your Outlook. Right, okay. And, and this is me being sales. Right. So, um, and it's also live. So ignore the emails that are coming in. So um, I'm in sales. I don't care whether you're using Marketo. I want you, I don't care what's at the back end. I know that we use a CRM system here. What I want is all of my job and the uh, interrogation of who's clicked, who's opened. I want that all to be relevant inside a CRM. I wanted to integrate with Outlook somehow, um, but most importantly, as a salesperson, I want relevancy, I want context, and I want it now. If I'm asking questions about, um, uh, has this person opened this email, or, or how come they got a lead score of 57? What on earth does that mean? So I want that now, and I don't want to have to keep going to, this, to the marketing people uh, to explain that. So here we are inside of, uh, and I'm going to show three or four different things right now. The first one is, is a little known capability that is uh, the Outlook plugin. Now, it's, it, it works with Outlook and it works with Gmail and it works on those platforms so long as your machine is a PC, not a Mac. So I've already probably um, disenfranchised half of you. Um, but what it does when I go to the, the Marketo message, a uh, little button just there, is it gives me all the templates that have been enabled. And as V showed a bit earlier on, these are ones where the email has got the little tick box under the section um, to identify as published through sale, Marketo Sales Insight. So what this does, if I double click on it, it now opens it in Outlook and it allows me as the salesperson, remember V said that some of these can be locked down? This one isn't. So I can now modify and say, hey, it was wonderful to talk to you a few moments ago. As discussed, we had a really good conversation about X, Y, and Z. And I can then send that email. Now I've actually put one in, I thought I had it in memory, but I'm now just, so I'm not gonna confuse matters and type incorrectly. I'm gonna whack that email address right there in. Now, that email doesn't actually, that record doesn't exist inside of Marketo. Now I've got, and what's gonna happen is it's gonna create that record based on that email address. So already, we're starting to get value here. We're using the salesperson to add new records into Marketo. Sure. How, one however, one, if it does exist, if it does exist in, in Marketo, it's just going to track it against that record. Yeah, nicely yeah. said. So <laughs> then I've got the old send button, of course, but I've also now got this send and track um, button just right here as well. So I'm gonna I'm gonna send that off. At that point, as V says, if the record doesn't exist, 
it will get created inside of Marketo um, and then push it. And in my case, what I do is I then push that into Salesforce immediately. So you can see the message that's actually come in to that person. One, there it is. So I've got a notification coming to me as a salesperson for any new leads that that record then has popped into my Salesforce instance. So again, Outlook into Marketo. Marketo's pushed that into Salesforce. And there's a, there's a rule that then sends me as the sales guy a notification to go check this thing out. Now, you'll notice immediately, and I won't drill into this too much, that Marketo's taken a few stabs at certain things, like the name, for example, that it's gotten wrong. So there's a bit of tidy up that's, uh, that's required there. But the immediacy is that we can now, we, we're now starting to track that person. We can track the email that's been sent. So I'll pause there just for a sec and then go to one I prepared earlier because this has got more attributes to it. So I'm ticking off the Outlook stuff and you can see how sending those templates out will allow me as the salesperson to use the right templates, the right words. I can lock things down or somebody kind of lock those things down if I'm in a regulatory position, so uh, uh, um, industry. So um, I can leverage that Outlook plugin uh, really quite, quite neatly. What we're showing now inside of um, Salesforce in this instance is this thing called Marketo Sales Insight. So it appears just as a new section um, on your page layout for both leads and contacts. And here it is. You can think of this as a, um, uh, as, as a, a, a portal directly into a window directly into the Marketo information that's stored immediately. So um, it's live. You can actually see with immediate effect what emails have been sent, what clicks and opens, and I'll show you that right now. So you can see that on this gentleman, who's one of the sales reps at Marketo actually, a guy called Ben Austin, you can see that he's got a score of 37. Now, what does that mean? So why have I been pushed this lead? Gosh, why is marketing suggesting that I follow this person up? Well, the salesperson, as a salesperson now, I can sit here and I can, I can review. I can see which um, emails and interesting moments that V described, whether this person's interrogated any of our web pages. And I can go back in history um, in order to say, okay, so I'm being pushed this because on that week, he hit 11 web pages on our website. Okay, now I can understand. Now we go further. If I wanted to see which web pages that Ben has uh, has looked at, you just click on that section and you can see that he went there. Then there's an event that we've got going. Oh, he's looking. He's interested in our Marketo training courses. That's uh, interesting. So maybe I pick up the phone and have a chat with him at that point. So here's the interesting moments that V was also talking about. And again, all of this is live and it's pulling this information directly out of uh, out of Marketo and distilling it. Because as most marketing people know, or Marketo users on this call will know, the stuff that Marketo captures about you is, bleh, it's a huge amount of stuff. And, but you want to present that neatly to the salesperson, because the salesperson has uh, limited patience and wants to see this stuff in context and with, uh, with value. I love One the fact that you just said limited patience, and then it popped up and said, please be patient. That's right. <laughs> Final thing here that I like, um, in fact, there's lots that I like about this whole bit, but um, in a distributed environment, especially with everyone working from home, sometimes it's almost impossible for the salesperson to actually know which emails have been sent out and what it actually, um, what things actually look like. So did Ben open this email? Well, what email was it? Sure, I can see the description there. But if I just click on that as a salesperson, and this comes back to the fact that uh, I want the information right now, I can just click on it and say, ah, that was the newsletter. Okay, so I can now see from there, he's clicked on this stuff about, uh, um, well, in this case, winning $500. So from here, we can see that as a salesperson, I get to see the score this person's got, and then I can basically go through and self-serve and retrieve all of that information about all the goodness that Marketo is capturing, but it's in a nice style and a nice, uh, uh, a nice presentation layer. Over here, I can add things to, to my own watch lists. We'll come back to that in a second. This is the add to Marketo campaign bit. And uh, maybe V can talk to this in a second because there's two options. There's add to the Marketo campaign here. I'll press go. And it's gonna pop up the campaign name. And I think we've just suggested that one. And then I'm gonna add that into the Marketo campaign. So V, what does that do? 
So that's going to hit that trigger that I was showing you earlier, which is uh, as soon as someone does this, it's going to hit that trigger, that smart campaign trigger down in Marketo, and it's instantly going to run that smart campaign for that person. So it might send an event invite, might add them to a nurture, it might do something along, uh, it, it'll do whatever you've asked that smart campaign to do. Mm. Now, the question that came in from uh, um, from one of the attendees is, should we do that or should we allow the salesperson to add to a campaign, which is I'm about to do now? So I've got, I happen to know this one here on revenue attribution, click on next. So the question is, what's best practice? The, uh, so it absolutely depends on... Um, if you want to go one-to-one -one or add a, um, a, a lot of people in. So uh, if you've got like a view that you've created of like 20 people, I would add them to a campaign. Uh, and uh, and so that they so that they fall in and then use the program campaign sync to do that. If this is just a one to one, like I'm a salesperson, I'm on a call, blah blah. If this is so much easier than add to campaign, because add to campaign you've got to go scroll down, you've got to add to, you've got to hit the add to campaign, then you've got to go through three clicks in Lightning to actually put them in in the right in the right uh, in the right status. This is add to Marketo campaign, go. Choose the campaign, go. Yeah. Like it's so on a one to one, I think this is heaps easier. Uh, but you can, if you need them to be part of the campaign, have Marketo push them into the campaign, into the mm. Salesforce campaign. So you're not missing out by doing it this way. Cool. Thank you. Um, there is this feature here for send Marketo email as well. It's a little bit similar to the Outlook plugin um, that we just mentioned. But the reason I wanted to show this is um, uh, it, it does. When you pull down the templates here, it does respect that uh, naming convention and the subdirectories, so to speak, um, inside of there. So we just need to be a little bit careful. And that's what Veronica was talking about there, of making sure you get the naming conventions right. So sometimes I enjoy the fact that when we're running an event, for example, we will actually have all of the event um, published emails that are going to expire the day before the event that they're actually in with the event so I can see what the event actually is. It makes it easier for me. But you can see how this sort of thing, you marketing, you marketo people, you just need to be careful that that, that, uh, that doesn't get out of, uh, out of control. So a couple of final things to show because we're getting close. Um, if I wanted to see all of this information in marketo, click on there and go there and it will basically take you into that uh, into that record in marketo. Yeah, you to can be fair, that turn, takes you to their activity log. So Correct. that's so that's that's that fire hose of information mm. that uh, as a salesperson you might want to use that if you if you're really meticulous at going through that but uh, most of the time you wouldn't use it. Mm. Most of the people I know who use that are marketers who want to hit that from Salesforce for troubleshooting. And then a final point up here um, under the Marketo tab, which may or may not be enabled. Again, you may want to restrict some of this information. And bear in mind this is actually live. Um, I've got some things and I've got. I've got a couple of stories inside of here. I remember working with one client where there was a, a young sales gun. It was basically saying, um, hey, uh, what has marketing done for me this week? Um, now, some of the leads weren't fully baked yet, and they weren't being pushed through, therefore, to this particular sales rep. So he'd received nothing from, from marketing, so to speak, at that point. Um, now, what we were able to do was to point at all of the web activity and all of the anonymous web activity in some cases. And I remember the discussion with him being, oh, my goodness, someone from Nestle has hit our website. Now, I'm the only person in this business, I believe, that is actually looking Looking at uh, is talking with Nestle at the moment and making some sensible decisions from there about whether this person was interested or not in that particular uh, service. But providing this sort of level of activity is really very uh, helpful for any salesperson who's actually trying to um, uh, trying to sell stuff. And don't forget that uh, on the Marketo side, uh, you can actually. Uh, very specifically uh, in that admin section I was showing you before, very specifically tell uh, Marketo and hence Salesforce what the stars and flames mean. So which score are they obeying? Which is one urgency, one's priority? Uh, you know, is it, if it's three stars, is it the top 15% of your leads or is it top 5%? You can be very, very specific about what those stars and flames indicate. I would, I would add sort of a final thing here on... 
just that relationship between you and sales. You can't expect sales to know how to use all this stuff. You just can't. Um, the uh, and so so marketers really need to take the lead on on getting sales acquainted with the tools. Also, I dropped a bit of a thing in the chat before. Uh, if your sales insight does not look like this, you're on the old version. The new version was updated in February of this year. So you should be get, uh, getting your Salesforce admin to reinstall your MSI plugin to the latest version. And that will uh, get you the new exciting MSI interface that we're showing you here, which is vastly different uh, and, uh, a lot, and a lot more user-friendly than, uh, than the old one. Um, one more thing, could you jump, uh, so over on the side there, see where it says email campaigns and events? Yep. You can be a little bit specific. So this is one of the new things with the new plugin. You can actually, uh, you can actually, if you hit that little governor, little, um, yeah, that little down arrow, mm -hmm. you can actually be quite specific about what you want here. So uh, what email campaigns you're looking for, in what date range, what events, things like that. And you can see if this person is actually uh, a member of that. Uh, you can see which uh, events this person is part of or that contact is a part of, and which email campaigns this person is a part of uh, for the next uh, X number of days. And you can be quite specific by typing in which campaign you're interested in. So if you can't see it so uh, immediately. So the um, so this is a very cool tool for sales to kind of answer the whole, I'm in X campaign, that, or is this person in X campaign? Mm. So it's, a, um, it's a, a cute little tool to be able to uh, deal with that from this end. So uh, we had a few questions as we went. Um, I just want to make sure we've covered them all off. Uh, the, uh, we had a question from uh, Sarah. Assume we just uninstall MSI and reinstall to get the new interface. You don't have to uninstall. You just reinstall. So you, uh, you just reinstall the new interface over the old one. Um, we also had a question. Uh, the, uh, how do we stop that MKT unknown that Graham showed from happening? That only happens if Marketo has nothing else to put there, if it's a new person that's being created. But in 99% of cases where you are actually using MSI, chances are you're using it on someone who already exists, in which case you'll just see the contact and you'll see this, uh, this tracking against the contact who already exists. So the, um, so, uh, the, uh, the, the method that Graham was showing is a cool little shortcut method for, for salespeople to add someone on the fly to Salesforce, but you don't have to do it that way. The, um, I think we've sort of, I think that's, uh, and we had a couple of questions around NetSuite that I answered on the chat, if you've got, uh, okay, does MSI work as well with Dynamics 365? It does now. <laughs> the, um, the latest update for MSI for Dynamics has brought it pretty much on par with, um, with uh, the, the Salesforce version, but uh, yeah, the, uh, Dynamics people should be sweet. Most of the time, Graham and I are pretty easy to find. So, and uh, this will be recorded and sent out. So, if you do have a if you do have a BDM or a salesperson or someone in your office who you're trying to to show some of the new coolness in the tools, uh, feel free to download the recording or point them in the direction of the recording uh, after the fact. Terrific. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming, and um, see you next time. Thanks, V. Awesome. Thanks, Graham. <laughs>